For those of you who started playing VGC in Generation 8, you may not be able to imagine a time where Incineroar wasn't considered a top tier VGC Pokemon. And while it was relatively short lived, this era did exist. In fact, while many players knew that Incineroar would eventually gain its ability in Intimidate, no one understood just how much it would impact the landscape of VGC. So let's go back in time to the faraway year of 2017 and talk about the rise of Incineroar. Generation 7 released in late 2016 and it came with three brand new starter Pokemon, none of which were too notable. Decidueye struggled to find a niche in a format that had the likes of Tapu Bulu and Mimigu, Primarina was far outclassed by Tapu Fini, and Incineroar had to contend with Arcanine, which was the premier Intimidate Pokemon at the time. That's not to say it wasn't viable though, it was a Fire and Dark type with access to Fake Out, U-Turn, and Flare Blitz. Despite that, it failed to live up to the utility that Arcanine had with its bulky and fast Intimidate, Snarl, and Will-O-Wisp. It was probably the best Pokemon in the early format. Incineroar didn't go unused though, it did find a home on plenty of teams that needed its tools, such as Giovanni Costa's famous Dragonite team from the North American International Championships. It wasn't a bad Pokemon really, it was just outclassed at the time. In fact, it remained outclassed in VGC 2018 because not only did it have to contend with Arcanine as an intimidating fire type, but now it had to deal with Landorus too. This was another common intimidate Pokemon that was extremely useful in the format. Being a ground type meant that Landorus was also a natural counter to Incineroar. Taking a look at the results back in VGC 2018, we can see how drastic Incineroar usage would eventually rise. With the top cut teams of the very first regional in Dallas, we can actually observe heavy Landorus usage alongside some pretty offensive teams. These teams had plenty of bulky Pokemon on them like Tyranitar and Metagross, but the playstyles back then were more fast paced and hyper offensive. In fact, if you don't believe me, just take a look at this final Gambit, Staraptor, and Mega Camera Up Trick Room team that was making the rounds at the time. It was actually pretty crazy and worth looking into. Ironically, we do see a single Incineroar team piloted by top 4 finalist Sam O'Dell. This Incineroar had to set a Flare Blitz, Knock Off, Roar, and Protect. While it didn't use Fake Out or have access to Intimidate at the time, it was a sign of things to come. Fast forward to March 2018 and there's a brand new Pokemon Home distribution done through Pokemon Bank. Users of the service would receive the Alola Starter Trio with their hidden abilities. Decidueye gained Long Reach, Primarina gained Liquid Voice, and of course Incineroar gained Intimidate. This was the day VGC players were waiting for. This was not a drill. We now had access to one of the greatest roll compression Pokemon ever. We had an Intimidate Pokemon with access to Hitmontop's Fake Out, Landorus's U-Turn Pivoting, Arcanine's Flare Blitz damage, and of course Stab Knockoff. The floodgates were open and it didn't take long for people to catch on to just how good of a Pokemon Incineroar was. Immediately, usage stats for Incineroar spiked as it found a home on nearly every team with it being tied with Landers for the number one used Pokemon in the entire format. Ironically, Incineroar wouldn't win the next regional, which was Charlotte Regionals, but funny enough, a smart metagame call from WolfGlick secured him and his competitive Milotic the first place trophy. Competitive Milotic, of course, being a natural counter to Incineroar, getting plus two special attack from that Intimidate drop and hitting it back with a pretty powerful water move. However, if we do take a look at the rest of Top Cut, we'll see heavier usage of Incineroar all the way down. These teams at the time were much bulkier than at the beginning of the format, but you can still see some pretty serious experimentation going on. This was because despite the fact the metagame was pretty much settled prior to this tournament, the release of Incineroar effectively caused a brand new metagame to have to develop around it. You can ask any player who competed back then and they'll tell you that VGC 2018 before Intimidate Incineroar was a whole different game. But let's jump to the World Championships that year to get a good look at how Incineroar truly shaped the format. Looking at the top 8 teams from this World Championship, we can see that Incineroar was on 5 out of 8 of the teams and there was one on every single top 4 team, which of course means that it won a World Championship the very first year it was available. Paul Ruiz won the whole thing with an innovative Snatch Incineroar team which is capable of stealing common moves like Tailwind or even Belly Drum. But taking a look at these top 8 teams, you'll see that this is by far the bulkiest the format had ever been. While every format slowly gets bulkier over time in Pokemon, it was much easier to play slow, bulky teams with access to both Incineroar and Landorus on your team. With Incineroar's rise being a fast and aggressive process, it maintained high usage throughout even the 2019 format which allowed for restricted legendary Pokemon. In fact, it was famous for its 236 HP, 236 special defense careful set which allowed it to tank a plus 2 Moonblast from Xerneas and force it back out with Roar, resetting its stat boosts. It was a metagame defining Xerneas check for the entirety of the format. In 2020, it wasn't initially in the decks, but it once again flipped the format on its head once Pokemon Home released and it was allowed back into the game, once again dethroning Arcanine. 
And all of you know the rest of the story, Incineroar is undoubtedly the greatest Pokemon to have ever been released into the VGC world, and it maintains heavy usage to this day. All that I can say is, whoever chose Incineroar as their favorite Pokemon when Gen 7 dropped is pretty happy with that decision. This is my last video before Scarlet and Violet drop and we return to daily uploads of battling and competitive moveset guides, but of course these videos won't stop. They may just happen once a week though. We'll keep them up because there's plenty of competitive Pokemon left to be discussed. However, if you enjoyed this, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel because we're on the road to 100,000 subs. And if you really enjoyed, please support the channel with a one-time tip via the thanks button or a recurring pledge over on Patreon like all of these lovely people. But of course, thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.